This week on Nation, we are going to be talking about toxic customers, awful customers, what can be done about it, why should anything be done about it. Hopefully you'll get something out of it, hopefully you'll just have some fun uh, hanging out, but either way, stay tuned for WCR Nation. What's up everybody, Jersey here from WCR Nation, um, what's going on? I'm so happy that you're here, um, if it's your first time checking us out, go back, we got 90 episodes, Nine. this is number 90, weekly episodes of 30 minutes or more, go check them out if you haven't, uh, they're on SoundCloud, Google Play, all those places, and our conversation happens on YouTube, so go to YouTube if you're not already watching it there, give us the thumbs up. I like awesomeness if you give us a thumbs up there on that video and of course comment do it now I really would genuinely appreciate it if you're on iTunes or SoundCloud or Google Play any of those other places go ahead and give us a review too that would be epic uh, but I am a window cleaning resource rep my number is 862-312-2026 one more time if you're listening write it down grab a piece of paper I want to be a rep 862-312-2026 2026. That's my cell. Text me, call me, whatever. Save it in your phone. Anytime you need an order placed, I am your man. I would love to do that. Shop all night, put it in your cart, and when it comes time, just text me. Be like, hey, it's in your cart. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it is like the most awesome virtual high five for me ever. And it is how I can afford the ice cream truck in the middle of summer. So thank you so very much for all you. Thank you to all the cool kids and the people who genuinely comment and text me and um, tell me the show means something to them uh, and they get something out of it. I really genuinely appreciate that, guys. Um, And uh, big, big thank you to everybody who does buy their supplies from me already. So be one of those cool kids and do that. Follow me on Instagram, JerseyWCRNation. That's it for there. I want to give a couple shout-outs today. Uh, Tyler Dry, what's up, man? Aaron McCohen, number one. Hey, first comment, first thumbs up. Like, Somebody's got to take the. Somebody's got to take it from me, man. Somebody's got to take it. You're gonna be busy one of these times, and somebody's gonna steal number one place. Tell me if you're number one. Uh, Jason Thomas, what's going on, man? I really appreciate uh, your comments always, and of course, Aaron Rudy, who gave me the inspiration for this episode. So thank you, Aaron. Uh, what up, my friend? So this week we're talking about toxic customers, and here's the thing. I want to put it out there because sometimes when I talk about stuff, people get a little guilty conscience. I had it a couple weeks ago. Like, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, it was uh, that people put in orders without me. A lot of my clients, not a lot, but some of my clients will put their own orders in. And I was uh, given some crap. Like, I want to put all your orders in. And uh, somebody was like, oh, sorry, that was me. I'm not talking specifically about anybody or any of my customers. I'm talking about customers in general. Yes, we have Toxic customers every now and then, they uh, do not last very long because of what we're going to be talking about. In my window cleaning business, there's toxic customers every couple months, it seems, that we get one. Why, might you ask? Why would a customer be toxic? What does it even mean? Well, a toxic customer to me, and comment down below and tell me what you think a toxic customer is. Give me some stories. But a toxic customer is somebody that I don't want to deal with. They take up too much of my energy, they ruin my day, they make me feel like crap, and uh, they they take away some of my 100% that I have every day. They take away my energy to have to deal with them, they wear me out, they just, there's just people out there who, t- it takes everything of your, your, your being to deal with them, and after the day you're like, how did this person, uh, who would talk to somebody like that? Why were they treating me like that? Like, why were garbage people, basically? Now, that's harsh. I I can't afford to not have... Here's the thing. When you're brand new, you may not be able to afford to lose one in your brain. But I'm telling you right now, you sure as heck can. You can lose somebody, especially somebody who's toxic. Especially somebody who's taking up all your mojo, your love for the industry. Who's just ruining your day. Because... They're an a-hole. If they are an a-hat, I'm trying to to be PG here. 
then uh, there's no need, man. Their dollar is not worth anybody any more than anybody else's dollar. So why deal with somebody who is bad for you? And I'm going to give you an example. We had a lady. We showed up to her house. Now, we, we use Responsibit, which, by the way, if you want Responsibit, we have a code at Nation that if you want to try it, it's actually like a bunch of free stuff with it, discounted rates and everything. Um, I'll go ahead and try to remember. Remind me. If not, I'll post that down. Anybody can use that link. But anyway, Responsibit. In a Responsibit, 99.5% of people are darn close. Darn close. And we had a lady who was really, and we always say, because I call everybody who get, does responsibility, books responsibility, whatever, I call them up and say, hey, it's Jersey from XYZ. I just wanted to call and tell you, hey, thanks a lot for signing up schedule with us. I want to put you in the calendar. And just so you know, uh, with all the responsibility things, when we first get there, we're going to recount all your windows for you, make sure everything's on par. Maybe you overcount it and we can get you, save you some money, and maybe you undercount it. We'll go ahead and talk about that before we start. That's my spiel. And every single person goes, oh, okay. Like, if you got a spiel. Something that you say every single time, you know you say it every single time. So this lady was told, we showed up to her house, and the back of her house, and I've not seen anything like it since, this was a house that uh, I verified with Google Maps from the front too. And uh, the numbers that she gave me were so off. We were $1,000, almost $1,000 off of her price. And uh, we got to the back, and the entire back of the house, they put like, it wasn't even an addition. It was like a, it was like a, it was like a sunroom, but it was a two-story. It was like this weird bit on the back of their house, and it was entire glass, sheets of glass, all cut ups on the inside. Uh, they were removable. It was just this huge thing on the back of her house was all windows like a normal house, and they put this huge addition on, which was like a sunroom that was two stories tall. And it was, you know, they could sit. And I got there and she didn't even put that on there. For some reason, she thought she didn't, I don't know. And uh, I, I, I say, hey, something must have went wrong. I'm so sorry. Uh, but uh, the price is quite a bit different because of that back part. But we could do just the house if that's what you want. She goes, no, why would I only want that? I said, okay, great. Uh, there is a lot more on there, though, that we're going to have to increase. You know, here's the new prices and things like that. And if you give me a few minutes, I'm going to try to move the customer that we have so we can fit this in. Otherwise, uh, we'll be able to move you in later this week. And she said, no, 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 you're going to do all of it. You said you were doing all of it. I'm going back and forth, right? And the lady pulls out the, she was maybe Indian or... I can't quite remember, it was quite a while ago, but she was not white, right? So she pulled the race card on me. She says, well, I hope in all my reviews when you leave my house that I don't mention that you're racist. I was like, what? This is, this is math, man. Like, you put down that you had 22 windows. You have like 87 windows. You just told me you didn't put the whole back of the house. How is this racist if you're not good at math? That's the reason. Math is math. If you put 22 windows, but you have 200 windows, there's a big difference. So this lady just drove me crazy. And I hate, I hate when people use the race card when they shouldn't. I hate when they use an excuse for some kind of thing, right? Or, or like if we have a Hispanic uh, employee who's walking around the house and you have to follow that person, right? If we have a, a black employee that's walking through your house and you request that they only do the outside, I will never do work for you again. Never, never. You're a toxic customer. I don't need that. I don't need that. You know why? Because it affects me. And I only have so much of myself. I don't need to be affected by somebody like that. Now, we get customers like that all the time uh, that are maybe a pain in the butt. They're harder to deal with, but they're a little harder. Like, oh, that's Mrs. Jones. Like, you have to understand Mrs. Jones really is a fine tooth comb. Make sure that you, you know, go in and she wants to talk and, you know, make sure you kind of go a little bit above and beyond. You can increase, make sure that price is adjusted for that. You can even consider that person toxic and not do work for them. No wrong right way in doing business because it's your business. But there are people out there who will talk down to you and make you feel like an absolute crap for no other reason than they think you're better than you. And here's the thing. We're a luxury business. We talked about this. You have to understand you're a luxury business. So in a luxury business, these people sometimes, and I have, listen, 
especially WCR, the customers and clients I have are awesome. Awesome. The customers and clients that I have with my window cleaning companies are awesome. For the most part, there's a lot of really, really amazing ones. But when someone comes along and they give you so much where it affects you, it's time to cut them. It's time to cut them. The dollar that you make does not constitute more money, more headaches, or more of you than the dollar that's easy to make. It's very hard to, I mean, sometimes you feel like it's happening over and over and over. And it's like, man, is it, is it something I'm doing? Like, I'm a window cleaner. I'm proud of what I do. Do I clean bird poop off windows? Yes, but you don't have the right to talk down to me for what I do, right? That's toxic customers. Very hard to get through. Um, there's something that I always say, and it's happiness is worth more than a dollar or a hourly rate. And here's where I'm going to explain this concept a little bit. And I tell this to my employees, and here's why. When we have a job that somebody feels completely unsafe with, we're going to look at it, we're going to bring all, everybody we can, minds together, and try to get it figured out. And if it just isn't happening, and it's not something you feel safe with, we're going to let the homeowner know, hey, this window thing, this whatever, we just don't feel safe doing, and I apologize, we'll make sure to get everything else done, but this one, there's just not a way that we're going to be able to do that. I'm not ever going to have somebody be unsafe, I'm not ever going to have somebody be scared of what they're doing and be unhappy to do what they're doing. And happiness is the reason that we do what we do. Like if you have a business, and I don't care if it's window cleaning, pressure washing, lawn care, balloon animals, I don't care what you're doing. You have this business. Yes, it's nice to make good money. It's nice to not have a boss, but the reason we don't have a boss or to have a place to go to or the freedom to travel or to go to your kid's assembly or your doctor's appointments is because of happiness. Now, we have a ton of stresses which try to bring that down all the time, all the time. But happiness, happiness is something that will allow you to continue to love what you do. And that's really the key. When you work for yourself and you're not happy, you will not work good. You will not work well. Good, well, whatever. Somebody will write me an email about it. But um, you're not going to work at your 100% because you hate what you do. And we've all had that. Man, hit that seven-year itch in business. It sucks. I sat for a year just sitting behind my desk waiting for the day to be done. Like, what am I going to do today? Like, somebody call. Hey, you want to go to lunch? Yes. Three hours later, you know, I've come back to my, I just, you get to that point. And when you lose happiness, you lose your fire, you lose your drive, you lose what makes you go and do work. No one there telling you. If you right now today, after listening to this, went, nah, I'm just not going to work today. There's no one there to yell at you. It's your own business. Yeah, maybe you lose customers or something like that, but you could do whatever you want. So... To be a business owner, to be a good business owner, you have to have that drive and fire and happiness in doing what you do. When people say, man, I love what I do. I love it. Those people will work a thousand times harder than somebody who's like, ah, oh, yeah, no, I mean, it's good. I used to like it. You know, I used to like it a lot more. It's just kind of the same old, like that person's not working. They're not happy. They're not fired up. And if you have a toxic customer, a toxic anybody who's bringing that down in you, they're affecting not just you. They're affecting your other customers. They're affecting your yearly growth. They're affecting what you can compound forever. Think of this. If you have one week of your time, you just went, Bleh. I'm not doing anything, right? We all take vacations. But think about this. By taking that week and not getting one new customer that week, not securing and making everybody that you do have happy that one week, that one week, say it only makes a 0.05% difference in your business. That 0.05, the next year when you're trying to build, is going to be a 0.05 smaller than if you would have given more, right? So even the littlest differences matter. And here's the thing. Sometimes when we have a to toxic customer again and again, it brings you down, it brings you down, it brings you down, and it is so much harder to dig your way out. When you're on the edge of a hill that's all muddy, it's so much easier just to take one step and get out. But if you slide all the way to the bottom, it takes so much more to get yourself back out. You're down there, you look up and go, man, it is so 
far for me to get out of this hole that these people have gotten me in. I, it's so far, I don't even, I'm not even going to try. I, I know it's useless. I'm not even going to waste my energy. I'm just going to sit here, right? That's getting to the bottom. It's super, super hard. If someone kills your drive and ruins kind of your feeling for everything, you will lose other customers because of that person. What are you talking about, man? Here's, here's what I'm talking about. Listen, if you just aren't feeling awesome, you just feel like crap. It's like, ah, oh, another day. Like this person just, ah. Oh. And somebody else calls you, you go, hello. Yeah, what? Okay. No, yeah, we'll be there. All right, and then you're on edge. And you have every little thing drives you crazy. People will read up on that. People will get, they'll catch that. Here's the thing. Think about when you were new. You could go into places like, hey, I'm the best window cleaner around. I'd love to get your windows. Like the energy and extra, uh, the excitement got you customers. It got people like, oh, man, this dude loves it. Yes. If you go in and be like, hey, I'm a window cleaner. Can I, can I do what you need done? That's what I'm going to do. People are like, no, no. It will affect everything you do. If you feel like crap, everybody will be able to read you. When you think people can't read you, they can read you. Like this, how I talk right now on this show is because I'm looking into a little dot on my camera, right? And I'm talking into a microphone, which is on the side you can't see. But you're just listening or seeing me, so I have to be animated. I'm a little bit more animated, right? I don't always have to be like this, right? But if I'm talking to somebody... This is over animated for this, but I'm still, you know, an excited person sometimes. But if I'm talking to somebody, say, hey, I would love nothing more than, like, somebody's getting into pure water, and they call me to ask. I will talk an hour about pure water. We don't have to sell anything. You don't need to finish off with anything. I just want to tell you about it. Because I'm passionate about it. I like what I do. I like who I do it for. I like the equipment. I like everything about it, and it makes me happy. Right? People can see that. If I hated life, because there's times you get into those funks no matter what you do, and these people are calling me, calling me every name. I had a guy one time, this is a w, ex-WCR uh, customer years ago, called me and he goes, you stu... And this, I'm on vacation, right? It's a Sunday, I happen to answer the phone because the phone was ringing and, and goes to all of us, and I picked it up. This guy didn't get some part or something. I said, well, I apologize. Processing's just not in now. They can see more things than I can see. I'll get with them first thing in the morning and we'll let you know. You stupid piece of... Just cussing at me. He must have been drunk. You sitting on your couch over there working for your dad, pulling things out of a storage container, you stupid piece of... Just going on and on and on. And I finally just hung up on the guy and I'm like, that just ruined... Like, I'm on vacation. I feel like crap. Right? You can't help but feel like crap. When people talk bad or talk to you like that, it makes you feel like crap. It'll affect everything that you do. It will even affect how you talk and have a relationship with your family. If you have kids and you come home from a crappy day, what happens? You come home and you're like, oh, hey, you know, you hug them and you're like, oh, guys, just dad needs a minute. Man, dad needs a minute. And they're like, oh, okay. Like if you're like the whole day, you're 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 snapping on your wife, and if if you're a female, maybe you're snapping on your husband or whatever. You know, it's that ruins it because of that one customer. There's so many things that make a toxic customer or a toxic environment or just a bit of your company that you hate so much ruin every aspect of you, every aspect of your life, not just for that one person. It's not just one person you're like, oh, I gotta go over to this so-and-so's house. Uh, like it ruins, All your employees are pissed and you're pissed and it just ruins your... It doesn't just ruin it for that. It ruins it for everybody that day. It compounds for that, that week, potentially. Say it's a Friday. You ruin your whole weekend over something like that. And it's very hard sometimes to keep that, keep getting, you know, these customers like that you hold it inside, right? It's very hard. Like I said, when you slide to the bottom of that muddy hill, you can get so far down that you don't even come back out. Not for a while. So getting rid of toxic customers is huge. It's so, so important. And here's, here's what I'll do. Um, 
every now and then in WCR, uh, we may get somebody who is just not great. Very seldom. I mean, my clients are amazing, all of you. Don't, this is not, I'm not, if you're toxic and you're one of my clients, you'd already have known it by now, right? But uh, I'll just say, you know, I just don't think we're going to be the right company for you. And they'll, oh, what are you talking about? I just, I don't see this being a great relationship for either of us. And I just don't think that we're going to be able to offer you what you think you need to be offered. You know, just putting it out there. There you go. Because here's the thing. If you sugarcoat something like a toxic customer, they don't read it. Because that's how they are to everybody. You think a toxic customer is just like that to you? No. They're the ones that go in and complain about their soup because it had carrots. But they thought that they were sliced carrots. But they're actually diced carrots. And I don't like thick carrots. Just... I'm not tipping the waitress or waiter good because I got my soup and I had different kind of carrots. That toxic person is toxic in everything. Every part of their life, that's how they are. So being completely blunt is the easiest way to get rid of them. Now, sometimes it's very hard with a customer. Say, hey, Mrs. Jones, you know, we've been doing your uh, job for quite a while. And I just feel like as a company, and I always put it on me because... The worst thing you can do is tell some. They know that they're toxic. You don't need to tell them that. But it will only make things worse. And here's the thing. When you leave somebody, when you drop a customer, when you fire a customer, when you leave a toxic customer, the thing you want to do is leave with such grace that they don't think about, they'll be pissed. I can't believe it. i got to find somebody new. But they won't be so pissed that they're going to be telling the world, you know, reviews, even if they're lying reviews, reviews, negative reviews suck, right? So I always say, Mrs. Jones, um, I apologize. You know, we've been doing your job for quite a while and uh, I just don't feel like we're ever able to keep you satisfied. And that that hurts me as a business owner and that's not what I want to do. So uh, from here on out, we're just going to go separate ways. And I, I do wish you luck. And I hope that you can find, you know, a company that can provide a little bit more service than us. And, and I do appreciate you giving us a shot in the first place. And it's been it's been a pleasure. Something like that. Has it been a pleasure? No. Right? Is is anybody going to please her? No. But it doesn't matter. You're trying to cut the tie gently. And that's the hard part. That's the hard part is to tell somebody that. But I've, I've said it even, you know, with WCR. It's happened maybe twice in the three plus years where I just was like, hey, listen, I... I don't think we're going to be, this is a good match. I I don't, I mean, the way that you're talking just makes me seem like that you're just very unhappy with what we're doing here. And and it just, you know, it just isn't working out. And and I've had people go, whoa, I'm so sorry, man. I, I wasn't, didn't mean to come off that way. Maybe it's just that. Maybe they just had a crap day. Here's the other thing. A toxic customer may not just be toxic once. They may be toxic all the time. But if they are, it's your first time meeting, maybe their daughter is sick and they crashed the car yesterday and the furnace went out and everything compounded and you know what you're the piece of crap that you know something happens sometimes you're where the garbage truck dumps right a garbage truck picks up little bits of garbage all day long and then goes one place and dumps all of it you may be the place that sometimes is how it is so it's up to you on where your degree is but be happy Being happy in business, like I said, will affect everything, everything in your business, in your life. And it's going to make you love business. If you work happy, if you love what you do and you have that fire that an entrepreneur has, you are unstoppable, unstoppable. These are the guys that when you talk to, you should go to all these shows. These guys are just, oh, man, I just got into business. Or I've been in business for a year, man. I just love it. This is what we're doing. Man, we're going to get this trailer. I got this set up with this guy. Those are guys that are passionate. If your passion is there, you will succeed. You'll do things that others cannot do without passion. Why let somebody else ruin that? Why give somebody right 10% of yourself? Why? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Here's the other thing that's very, very hard to realize is that everyone has an opinion. Go on a forum sometime. Go on, you know, any place that you possibly can and and read people's opinions. The hard thing is that everybody has an opinion, but you don't have to care about that person or that person's opinion. Now, if your mom came to you and said, 
I don't like you. You, your nose is too crooked. <clears throat> your, uh, you know, your hairline is too receded. I don't know if that's a thing. Whatever, right? Then you go, whoa, whoa, mom, that man, that that hurt. Some stranger came up to you on the street and went, I don't like your nose. It's too crooked. Go, Thanks, weird guy. And you'd walk away. Maybe for two seconds, you'd be like, maybe my nose is a little crooked, but that guy's crazy. Because you don't care about that guy. You don't care about his opinion. It's hard with customers. Because a customer builds your business. The reason you have a business is because you have customers. If you didn't, you wouldn't make any money. You wouldn't have a business. So you, in turn, kind of care about what they say. When they treat you like crap, sometimes it hits home. Sometimes they can say things where you're like, whoa, man, that really hurt. But that just means you cared about what that person said about you. It's, it's a hard trade to get, but there will always be people who want to say things about you. And it, it, it's hard. It'll take energy from you. But you got to try to, you know, not let that happen. And that's where customers come in. You can drop a customer anytime you want. If you're a sole uh, proprietor, uh, owner, operator, whatever, and you have, um, you know, uh, X amount of customers and that X amount of customers is the, where you want to go. Well, find in there, is there anybody in there that you hate doing the work for, right? Strengthening that. What if you had every customer in there was like your favorite, think right now of your favorite customer, your favorite client you have. Everybody can think about it like that. Oh man. They're so awesome. They're so grateful. They're so happy. What if every one of your customers was like that? You would love going to work. Every day you got up like, hey, they'd be like, oh my gosh, oh, thank you so much for coming out. It would be awesome. Right? It's like me. How appreciative I am when you guys buy supplies through me. <laughs> it's a shameless plug. Right? But that's the thing is that if you're happy, it translates. And that's really what this is all about. It's translating. This time of year... Uh, it's hard because we're coming out of spring. If you're watching this later, this was done at the end of February. Actually, March 1st is when this episode will come out. And it's very hard because you aren't getting a ton of work right now. So when something does come and they're toxic, it's so much harder to drop them than middle of spring. You're so busy. Oh, yeah, I just don't have time for that. It's so much easier to let them fall off. Right? That's kind of the hard, the hardest part this time of year, but... Try to kind of go and do your thing and uh, just drop toxic customers. But anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to please give us a thumbs up on the video. If you are listening to this, give us a review. That would be awesome. Go to YouTube, comment, and give that a thumbs up if you want. But most importantly, and I'm talking most importantly, let me put your order in. Every week I give you a code, and I've forgotten the past couple weeks. This week's code is toxic. Now, if you call me, Email, text, 862-312-2026. If you shoot any of that stuff, say, hey, my order's in, and the word is toxic. Like a cool Dick Tracy secret password. I don't know if they had secret passwords. That you're going to get 5% off your order, so let me know. That just shows me you watch. Let me know you're like the show. Let me know it sucked. Tell me whatever you want. I just really genuinely appreciate you guys putting orders in through me, of course, and uh, letting me know everything is awesome and I don't get too many people who say that it sucks, but eh, if you do, then cool. But hopefully I can help you guys out and hopefully you get something on these shows. So go do that. Uh, most importantly, like me on Instagram. I need Instagram followers. Man, I'm new. It's Jersey at, I don't know, sorry, at Jersey WCR Nation. And that's my name. Just go like it. Some funny pictures and things. And uh, we're doing a bunch of stickers, too. If you have a nation sticker and you got it posted somewhere uh, behind me right there, if you have a nation sticker posted somewhere, put a picture, tag me on Instagram, and I will share that out. I love seeing that. We got, like, five uh, pictures on that already. So pretty awesome. But thank you, guys. Go out there. Don't be toxic yourself. Don't let a customer bring you down. And just overall, go out there and be epic.